first thing I'm going to jump on is where did your Bible come from? This is your brand new 2013 New World Translation. They will not tell you where the New World Translation came from. And it appears the only people that can actually find out where it came from are people who are not Jehovah's Witnesses or Jehovah's Witnesses who leave. Because once you're outside the box that they put you in, your eyes come open and you realize, wait a second, I can't believe I used to believe that. Now I see what I'm talking about, I'll see what's going on. Let me show you where this New World Translation came from. Thirteen years before the New World Translation, this is the 1950 edition right here, thirteen years before this ever came off the presses, there was a New Testament that had already been published by another organization. This other New Testament for John 1-1 read, the Word was a God. Thirteen years before the Jehovah's Witness New Testament came out. And notice when they first came out, they came out as a New Testament. They didn't come out with the Old Testament first. They came out with the New Testament first. And this New Testament in key passages was mirroring this other New Testament that came out 13 years earlier. This other New Testament that came out 13 years earlier also denied that Jesus rose from the dead in the body that he died in. So I began to wonder, and so many others began to wonder, is there any connection between these or is it just coincidence that both of these Bibles for John 1.1 1, 1 says the word was a God? And both of these Bibles deny that Jesus rose from the dead in the body. And both of these Bibles agree in various other places. So first of all, before I go further, I want to show you <coughs> the Bible I'm talking about. This is it. It's a New Testament by a man named Johannes Reber. It's called... The New Testament, A New Translation and Explanations from the Earliest Manuscripts by Johannes Grieber. Big title. In this book, for John chapter 1, verse 1, and every, you guys who are watching the video, I'm going to be putting this up on the video so you can see uh, what I'm quoting, so you can see what I'm talking about here. Here for John 1, 1, in Grieber's Bible, it reads this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Just like the New World Translation. Except the New World Translation came out after this one. Now how was this Bible put together? Well, Johannes Grieber, unlike the Watchtower leaders, he doesn't hide who he is, and he doesn't hide how he put together his Bible. So on page 15, he explains how he put this thing together. Take a listen, and put it up on the screen. I myself was a Catholic priest, and until I was 48 years old, had never so much as believed in the possibility of communicating with the world of God's spirits. The day came, however, when I involuntarily took my first step towards such communication and experienced things that shook me to the depths of my soul. After I had taken the first step, I could not stop. I must go forward. I must have enlightenment. Two paragraphs down. My experiences are related in a book that has appeared in both German and English that bears the title Communication with the Spirit World, Its Laws and Its Purposes. Many of the readers of this book who have sought to communicate with God's spirit world have had experiences similar to my own and have found the same truth that I found. I availed myself of this contact with the source of truth to seek enlightenment above all in regard to the text of the Bible as we know it today, and for the occasion of my first experience with the world of divine spirits, my attention had been called to the fact that the books of both the Old and New Testament contained a great deal of spurious matter which uh, had been given rise to many erroneous ideas prevailing in the Christian churches of our day, subsequently learned about these falsifications in detail. He said he wrote a book called Communication with the Spirit World. I got it right here. Communication with the Spirit World, Its Laws and Its Purposes by Johannes Grieber. This book is very interesting. It's Johannes Grieber's own story. He was a Catholic priest who was invited to what was called at that time a prayer meeting. But what he found out was that the term prayer meeting was just a code word for seance. Before that time, he had never been to a seance before, so he didn't quite know what to expect. He decided to stick around and see what would happen. What ended up happening is a spirit manifested, possessed one of the people that was there, and began to speak through that person. And Grieber realized very quickly that the person who was speaking was not the being that was giving the information, because the information was way too advanced. So Grieber decided he would go to more and more and more of these seances to learn more and more of these doctrines that these spirits were giving. The issue is, though, 
Grieber thought these spirits were from God. Notice the title of the book, Communication with the Spirit World of God. He's thinking these spirits are from God. It never occurred to him that you don't approach God through seances. So ultimately, he left the Catholic Church to join the occult full time. He wanted these spirits to use him the way they were using the people there at the seance. And that's exactly what they did. The spirits controlled him and had him write this book, Communication with the Spirit World. Pretty thick book. A lot of information these spirits had. We're going to take a quick look at the table of contents. We're going to put it up on the screen just so you can get an idea of who the person is who wrote this Bible that reads like your New World Translation. And his Bible came out before your New World Translation. And we're going to see whether or not they interlock somewhere, whether the leadership of the Jehovah's Witnesses had anything to do with Johannes Grieber. We're going to find out in just a moment. Look at the table of contents so you can see what kind of stuff Johannes Grieber is involved in. Part 1. Personal experiences in the field of spirit manifestations. My first step toward communication with the spirit world. The first seance. A visit to my parish church in the company of a medium. A member of a monastic order who attended spiritualist meetings. The prediction relating to my personal fortunes is fulfilled. A mediumistic message delivered to me on a train and its confirmation. An important document is sent to me by an unknown hand. Part 2. Uh, the Law of Vital and Ordic Force. This is deep occultic stuff. Go on to the next page. Uh, Roman numeral 2. The section on mediums. Mediums for table communication, writing mediums, planchette mediums, speaking mediums, apport mediums, materialization mediums, physical mediums, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience. Development of mediums. I mean, this guy was deep. He went deep into it. Part three, spirit communication in the post-apostolic age, spiritualism in light of modern science. The list goes on and on. Uh, part four, messages from God's spirit world concerning the great problems of religion. He's allowing these spirits to use him to write this book. But the spirits were not done when they got done with this book. They wanted a Bible. They wanted the Bible, written in their image, after their likeness. Let's go back to what his Bible had to say concerning how he put his Bible together. It says, in rare instances in which the text pronounced correct by the divine spirits can be found in none of the manuscripts available today, I have used the text as they were given to me by those spirits. So he's acknowledging that the spirit beings that were communicating through to him was contradicting the manuscripts, but he just wrote it down the way they told him. Very important. This flyer came with his Bible, and this is what it says. The task was not simple. Many contradictions between uh, what appears in the ancient scrolls and the New Testament, as we have grown to know it, arose and were subject to constant prayer and guidance. Prayers that were answered and for the discrepancies clarified to him by God's spirit world. At times he was given the correct answers in large illuminated letters and words passing before his eyes. Other times he was given correct answers through prayer meetings. What were the prayer meetings? Seances. His wife, a medium of God's spirit world, was often instrumental in conveying the correct answers from God's messengers to Pastor Creeper. So his wife is a spirit medium, he's a spirit medium, and they're putting together books by having spirits translated. Here's John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. This here, the 2013 edition, we open up to the book of John, chapter 1. And let's see what it says here in the brand new Jehovah's Witness Bible. You will find it to be word for word from Grieber's Bible. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. So we have an agreement between the Jehovah's Witness Bible and the Bible put together by the spirit world. The question is, is there any interlocking mechanisms between this 
occult satanic Bible version and the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Let's take a look. When the Jehovah's Witness Bible came out in its fall, around 1960 or so, people began to question where did they get this translation of the word was a God from? So the leaders of the Jehovah's Witnesses wrote this book, and I'm sure this is a book they've never shown you. It's called The Word, Who Is He According to John? It's a little, little booklet. This is what it says on page, we're going to start uh, page four. This is supposed to be an explanation as to how they got the word was a God. What was their source for coming up with that? And I want you to understand, it doesn't matter what the leadership is saying today about where they got the word was a God from. Around the time that they put their Bible together, and this here, this book, 1962, so they finished their full Bible version, I believe, around 1960 or so. This is 1962. They're given an explanation as to where they got the word was a God from. Okay? This is what it says here, starting on page 4. But most controversial of all these, of all this is the following reading for John 1, 1 and 2. The word was in the beginning, the word was with God, and the word was a God. This word was in the beginning with God. This reading is found in the New Testament, an improved version, published in London, England, 1808. Similarly, is a reading by a former Catholic priest. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Now, where it says similarly, see it on the screen, there is an asterisk, a little star next to the S, pointing you to the footnote down to the bottom to see what they're quoting from. The footnote at the bottom says... The New Testament, a new translation and explanation based on the oldest manuscripts by Johannes Grieber, a translation from German into English, edition 1937, the front cover of this bound translation being stamped with a golden cross. Let's take a look at this book and see if they're quoting from the Satanic Bible. The name of the book, The New Testament, a new translation and explanations based on the oldest manuscripts. The New Testament, a new translation and explanations based on the oldest manuscripts. Uh, let's see, by Johannes Grieber? By Johannes Grieber. Translations from German to English, edition 1937. Copyright, 1937. It says here, the front cover of this bound translation is stamped with a golden cross. Now you may say, aha, I got you, it's a white cross. Nope, sorry. That's the jacket. Take the jacket off. And there's your golden cross. The support that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society has for John 1.1, 1, 1, the word was a God, is Grieber's Satanic Bible. They can say whatever they want to say today about where they got it from. But in this little booklet, they acknowledged where they really got it from. Johannes Grieber's Demonic Bible. Look for this book in your kingdom hall. The Word, Who Is He According to John? Written by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. I want to show you it's your own publication. I have no reason to lie to you. Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. We'll put it all up on the screen for you so you can see it. The support that they gave for translating John 1.1, 1, 1, the word was a God, is Johannes Grieber's Satanic Translated Bible Version. Satanically Translated Bible. Your leadership claims they have no dealings with spiritualism. Yet they're using Grieber to support their views. But that's not the only time they've used Grieber. 1956, Watchtower, bound volume. February 15, 1956. The Jehovah's Witness leaders needed some support for their beliefs, but they couldn't find any support in Christian circles, so they went to the occult again. They went back to the spirit medium because he supports their views. 
the occult supports their views. They went back to Grieber. Page 110 in your bound volume, 1956, Watchtower, February 15. It says on the right-hand column, down below, I'm going to put it up on the screen, says Johannes Grieber in the introduction of his translation of the New Testament, copyrighted 1937, I myself was a Catholic priest and until I was 48 years old had never so much as believed in the possibility of communicating with the world of God's spirits. The day came, however, when I involuntarily took my first step towards such communication and experienced things that shook me to the depths of my soul. My experiences are related in a book that has appeared in German and English and bears the title, Communicate with the Spirit Word of God, Its Laws and Its Purposes. In keeping with his Roman Catholic extraction, Grieber's translation is bound with a gold leaf cross and its stiff front cover. In the foreword of his aforementioned book, ex-priest Grieber says, the most significant spiritualistic book is the Bible. Under this impression, Grieber endeavors to make the New Testament translation read more spiritualistic. In 1956, they're acknowledging that they knew about Grieber and his demonic Bible version. 1956, they knew about Grieber and his demonic Bible version. The word who was he according to John came out in 1962, where they're quoting his demonic Bible version as a support for their views. Last paragraph, page 111. Very plainly, the spirits in which ex priest Grieber believed helped him in his translation. They knew in 1956 that Grieber had written a demonically translated Bible. But it didn't stop them. It didn't stop them. They still used them to support their views because they couldn't find a Christian source to support their views. So they went to the spirit medium. But I want you to notice they won't call him a spirit medium in many of these books. They'll just call him an ex-Catholic priest. This here is Make Sure of All Things. Many Jehovah's are familiar with this book. Make Sure of All Things. It's a Watchtower publication. Let me get the year for you. Make Sure of All Things. This is 1965. They knew in 56 that Grieber was a spirit medium and wrote a satanic Bible. But here, in 19, let me get that date again, 1965, here they are quoting Johannes Grieber to support their views again. On page 489, for John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning the Word existed, and the Word was with God, and the Word was divine, they said for a modern translation, and it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. The New Testament, a new translation and explanations based on the oldest manuscripts, a translation from German into English, 1937, by Johannes Grieber. Page 489. Make sure of all things, hold fast, to what is fine. Again, they're quoting the spirit medium as the source for where they got the word was a God from. Jehovah's Witness, you know that your organization speaks out so heavily against spiritualism, while at the same time you're finding out they've been practicing spiritualism and you ain't seen nothing yet. I got plenty more of the spiritualism that the governing body's been participating in. When the news began to come out that uh, the leadership of the organization was quoting a spirit medium, instead of admitting what they were doing, they decided they were going to try to cover it up. In the back of Watchtower magazines, many Jehovah's Witnesses are familiar with a section called Questions from Readers. And you think that those questions are sent in from readers, and some may be. But after you see this, I think you're going to see that some of the questions that they have in there are softball questions put in by the leaders so that they can give the answers that they want to give. Now, I want you to remember, for the average member of the Watchtower, I'm not attacking you uh, as the Jehovah's Witness. I'm talking about the leadership. The leadership of the Watchtower. Use Grieber in this book, Make Sure of All Things, 
They used the witch, the spirit medium, the channel. They used him to support their views in this book. They used Johannes Grieber in the word. Who is he, according to John? They used him again to support their views. In your bound volume that we read earlier, they used him again. In your book, A to Bible Understanding, page 1134, they used Grieber again to support the views of the governing body, knowing that this man is a spirit medium. So in this book, in this book, in this book I just showed you, and in Aid to Bible Understanding, they used Johannes Grieber, and you've seen it. Now I want you to hear this question that's in the April 1st, 1983 Watchtower in the Questions from Readers section, and you tell me if you really believe that a reader sent this question in. Okay? Here's the question. Why in recent years has the Watchtower not made use of the translation by former Catholic priest Johannes Grieber? Not made use? Not made use of his translation? They have made use of his translation over and over and over, and there's more books I wouldn't even get. They used them over and over and over and over and over to support their views because they could not find a Christian to support their views. They went to the spirit medium. They went to the spirit medium because he supported their views with his satanic Bible version. And they kept quoting his satanic Bible version in support of who the Jehovah's Witness leaders believe that Jesus is. The witch, the spirit medium, the channel, and the demons that controlled him all agreed that Jesus is a God. But the real Bible tells you that he is God. I've mentioned on several occasions so far that the Jehovah's Witness leadership has leaned very heavily upon the work of Johannes Grieber, a spirit medium, not only dealing with their Bible translation, but also dealing with their teachings and their doctrines, the things that they teach their members. One of the premier whistleblowers on YouTube exposing these things is a lady by the name of Christiane. You'll find her there on YouTube, youtube.com slash Christiane. On her page, she does several videos dealing with Johannes Grieber. And hopefully she doesn't mind. I've been trying to reach her for over a year. I have not been able to speak to her on the phone to talk about some of these things. But I'm hoping she won't mind that I'm using a clip or two from her video series in this video in order to show people because she went into some even more things dealing with Johannes Grieber and I wanted to bring this out so I want to show you this section of one of the videos that she had done dealing with Johannes Grieber as you can see the teachings and beliefs that the spirit world the demonic spirit world taught Johannes Grieber Many of these teachings are teachings that the Jehovah's Witness leaders, its elders, and all are teaching their members and calling these teachings the truth. But now you're realizing where they're getting these teachings from. So I'm going to hand it over right now for a few moments to Christiane. And she's going to spell out to you some of these teachings right from Johannes Grieber's own writings, right from the spirit world that Jehovah's Witnesses are taught today. And they thought these teachings came from God. They thought these teachings came from the Bible. But now you're about to see that these teachings actually came from the occult, from the spirit world, and from demonic forces. Take a listen to what Christiane had to say. Now in Johannes Grieber's second book, Communication with the Spirit World, he explains how he wrote his translation of the Bible from seances and having spirits tell him. And we're going to read from this book. See if this sounds like Jehovah's Witness teaching to you. You teach of the union of three persons in one Godhead, maintaining that there are three spirits, each of which is a true deity, but which, when united, are one God as to substance. This is a piece of human fallacy and is an absurdity. There is no union of three persons and no trinity in the sense in which you teach. God is an individual person. Only the Father is God. All other holy spirits are God's creatures. None of them is the Father's equal. Remember, this is what he's being told by spirits.
Furthermore, you teach of a God who inflicts eternal punishment, and you teach of an everlasting hell. Hell is not everlasting. God is love. He does not commend, condemn any creature eternally. All those who have incurred the guilt of deserting him will ultimately return unto him. That is the truth, and I shall prove to you on another occasion. Now here are some more teachings that Grieber got from the spirit world by doing seances. Christ is the highest spirit which the omnipotent God could create. He is in every way God's most perfect image, so far as any created spirit can possess the Creator's perfection. Hence, St. Paul rightly calls him the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Christ is therefore not God, and is so generally taught today, but the first created Son of God, and as such, his highest and most perfect creature. Does this not sound like Jehovah's Witness teaching? But remember, Johannes Grieber is a spirit medium. He believes in communicating with God's spirit world. That's where he got these teachings from. Now, if you are a Jehovah's Witness, it's probably astonishing to you to hear the doctrines that you are taught by the leadership of your group being recited from the demonic spirit world, that that's what they believe. The leadership of your group goes out of their way to tell you that we Christians who teach the opposite of what Grieber is teaching, they tell you that we're the ones who are wrong, that we're the ones who are misdirected, that we're the ones who are not in the truth. But now you're realizing where your teachings actually came from. It came from the demonic spirit world. And that's one of the reasons why they don't want you to know who put your Bible together. They try to hide it by saying that these, these men, these are holy men, these are righteous men. They want Jehovah to get all the glory. That's all nonsense, folks. It's a smokescreen. They know that if you do a deep dive research as being done here, I'm backing up all the stuff that I'm saying with documentation from their own literature. Which is one reason why they've had you turn in a bunch of your old books and everything. They don't want you having access to this information anymore. They want you going to their website for the information. And their website has been scrubbed of any information that would lead you to what we're coming into and talking about here in this video. They're not going to post this stuff on their website. But they know if you had the old books, you have access to it. That's why they don't want you to have the old books. I want you to understand... If you're wanting to become a Christian, Jehovah's Witness is not the way. Their group is not Christian, never has been. The teachings that their group has is the opposite of Christianity. And you're seeing that clear as day in this presentation. The Johannes Grieber Memorial Foundation must have been very happy that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society was using their occult Bible version and their other book, Communication with the Spirit World, in their publications. So they decided to send a few more copies to the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And you have here on your screen a letter that was written by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society to the Johannes Grieber Memorial Foundation. You see it's on official Watchtower letterhead. The uh, date is December 20th, 1980. The address they mailed to, Johannes Grieber Memorial Foundation, 139 Hillside Avenue, Teaneck, New Jersey, 07666. And it says here, gentlemen, this is to acknowledge the receipt of two books you recently sent to us. The New Testament translated by Johannes Grieber and his book, Communication with the Spirit, World of God. We appreciate your sending these volumes to us. For some years, we have been aware of the translation by Johannes Grieber and have on occasion even quoted it. Copies of the translation, though, have been hard to obtain. Since we have four libraries in our headquarter facilities consulted by the members of our staff, including the writers of our journals and books, we wonder about the possibility of obtaining a few additional copies of the New Testament. Please direct any communications about the above request to the writing department, desk EG, sincerely, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, of New York. So in the letter that was written to the Johannes Grieber Memorial Foundation, they acknowledged that they've been using Grieber in their publications, they were aware of his translation, and they were asking for even more copies of Johannes Grieber's demonic Bible version. Now you got to understand the date on this, December 20th, 1980. This is long before the internet.
When somebody wanted to find a rare book, they would either have to find somebody that had one or find somebody that knew where you could find one. In this case, there were at least two people who wrote to the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses asking them, where can we find a copy of Johannes Grieber's Bible that you guys keep quoting? These are copies of the letters that were sent from the governing body to these two people. And I want you to take notice. They know where to find Johannes Grieber's Bible. You see the address here, Johannes Grieber Memorial Foundation, 139 Hillside Avenue, Teaneck, New Jersey, 07666. This is 1980. Take a look on your screen now at the note that is on there now that is uh, sent by the Watchtower Bible and Track Society to the first person. Her name is Helen McAllister. She had written to them asking the governing body, where can she find a copy of Johannes Grieber's New Testament Bible? Now, as you saw in the, the first letter, the governing body knows what the address is to the Johannes Grieber Memorial Foundation. They know where to find his Bible, not to mention the fact they already had possession of at least two. One that they already had that they were quoting from in their books and magazines, and one that was sent to them by the Johannes Green Memorial Foundation. And plus, they had asked the Memorial Foundation to send them more. So who knows how many they had total. Now, take a look at the letter that they wrote to this lady. They could have just ignored the letter and just claimed they never got it. But no, the leadership decided to lie. This is what the letter says. And it's right here on your screen. You can read it right along with me. Watchtower letterhead dated September 21st, 1981. They wrote to the Grieber Foundation in 1980. They knew what the address was in 1980. This here is September 21st, 1981. It says, Helen, dear sister, your letter of August 20th, 1981 has been received and is now before us for answering. You asked for information on how you may obtain a copy of the New Testament by Johannes Grieber. The only address we have is that given in the translation itself, which was a 1937 edition, it lists the publisher as being John Folksberg Incorporated, 84th Avenue, New York, New York. We do not note any updated listing in the New York directory, so it may be necessary to have your bookstore send out a search inquiry regarding the translation. We trust our comments prove helpful. We take this occasion to send herewith an expression of warm Christian love and best wishes. Your brothers in Jehovah's service, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. Folks, they gave this person a bogus address. And they claim they didn't know where to find Grieber's Bible. Now, who knows how many others wrote to them and they sent them the same bogus address. Let me show you another letter that was written to the governing body in which they did it again, put up, gave a, a totally bogus address. Once again, this here was Keith Morse. Keith Morse of St. Louis, Missouri. You'll see the letter right there on your screen. This one here is December 10th, 1981. Again, Watchtower letterhead written by the governing body, December 10th, 1981. It says, Dear friend, we are in receipt of your recent letter and are taking this opportunity to reply to your inquiry concerning which you would like to hear from us. With reference to your inquiry regarding the publication of the New Testament by Johannes Grieber, we have to inform you that we do not publish or stock this book. In line with your comments on the title page of our library copy of this book, again the date 1937, the name of the publishers are given as John Folksberg, Incorporated 88 North 4th Avenue, New York, New York. This is really the only information that we have and can only suggest that you might possibly get some help by making inquiries at a second-hand bookstore. Please be assured of our best wishes. Yours sincerely, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, Incorporated. So to Keith Morse and to Helen McAllister and whoever else wrote to them and asked them, where can we get a copy of Grieber's Bible? They sent them all bogus addresses, totally bogus addresses as to where they could find Grieber's Bible. Is that a godly thing to do? Is that a Christian thing to do? Why did they hide Grieber's address from them? It's real simple. In their book, Insight on the Scriptures, written like a dictionary, you go to letter L, look at the word lie, the leadership of the organization, 
the governing body defines lying as not telling the truth to one who is entitled to know the truth. They did not consider these people as entitled to know the truth. Therefore, they feel completely justified to give them a completely bogus address, false information, and lie to them because they don't want them to know where they got Grieber's Bible from. They don't want them to have access to Grieber's Bible. Remember, this is before the internet. These people didn't have any other way of finding this book but trying to go through a source that already had it. And the Watchtower Society blatantly lied to these people to try to cover up what they did with their Bible by using this spirit medium to put together their New World Translation for John 1.1 1, 1 and various other passages in their New World Translation, including, as we see now, Many years later, the 2013 Jehovah's Witness brand new New World Translation, John 1.1, 1, 1, reads word for word with Johannes Grieber's demonic, satanic New Testament Bible. And I'll put it on the screen for you all to see it side by side where you can see right now word for word the Johannes Grieber's New Testament, New Testament, John 1.1, 1, 1, and the Watchtower Bible, John 1.1, 1, 1, the exact same words, word for word, right from Grieber's Witchcraft Bible. You see it right there on the screen, word for word, John 1.1, 1, 1, 2013 Jehovah's Witness Bible, Johannes Grieber's Witchcraft Bible, word for word the same. You may wonder why it is that an organization that claims to be the chosen organization to bring God's truth why would they be dabbling with spirit mediums and channels and occult practices while keeping it secret and trying to hide it from their members? This all goes back to their very first edition of Watchtower Magazine, written by Charles Taze Russell. You see it here on your screen, page 8 of the very first edition of Zion's Watchtower, the Watchtower Magazine, page 8. At the bottom of the page it says, what is truth? I want you to listen to this paragraph that Charles Taze Russell wrote, and it will explain to you why the governing body today believes that they can find Christian truth in satanic sources. It says, what is truth? This question is one which every sincere Christian should ask and seek to answer. We should learn to love and value truth for its own sake, to respect and honor it by only acknowledging it wherever we find it and by whomsoever presented. Listen to this next sentence. A truth presented by Satan himself is just as true as a truth stated by God. Let me read that for you again. Charles Taze Russell, founder of the group that would later be called Jehovah's Witnesses, laying down the law that the governing body today still abides by. This is what he says. A truth presented by Satan himself is just as true as a truth stated by God. Let me read the next sentence that comes right after this. Perhaps no class of people are more apt to overlook this fact than the Christian. So he considers a truth presented by Satan himself is just as true as a truth stated by God. He calls that a fact. The problem is, my King James Bible tells me that Satan is the father of lies, and there is no truth in him. There is no truth in him. So for Charles Taze Russell to say a truth presented by Satan himself is just as true as a truth stated by God. There is no truth in Satan. And it appears he didn't realize that. And it appears the modern-day governing body doesn't realize that either, as they went to a spirit medium to help them put together their New World Translation, because the real Bible in the English language, the King James Bible, does not agree with the, with the uh, Jehovah's Witness doctrines. So in order to find proof to support their views, they went to a spirit medium. And when they got caught, they tried to cover it up. They tried to deny they did it. But when you open up your brand new 2013 New World Translation, John 1.1, 1, 1, word for word, is right from Grieber's demonic Bible. And you cannot deny it. 
And there is no escape in the reality that your New World Translations John 1.1 is word for word from Grieber's Witchcraft Bible. Now today they might say, well, they're using the Westcott and Hort manuscript. Well, when you look in your Kingdom Interlinear Version, you will see for John 1.1 in the Greek, this is what it says, In beginning was the Word, and the Word was toward the God, and God was the Word. You'll see in the Greek, it does not say a God was the Word, it says God was the Word. And I want you to notice in the Greek above that word God, it begins with a capital letter, not a lowercase. And I am left to believe that the Watchtower organization lowercase the G in the English for God in order to make this try to satisfy their particular religious doctrine. But in doing so, they created a secondary problem for themselves, and that is this. How many true gods are there? One. Well, the way that they've designed this, by saying that Jesus is a god, and God the Father is God, they now have two gods. So you have to ask yourself the next question. If they're going to present themselves with Jesus being a god, and the Father being God, you have two gods, which one is the false god? if there's only one true God. If you say that Jesus is the false God, you have another problem. Why would you begin your prayers in the name of a being you say is the true God, and then end your prayers in the name of a being that you think is a false God? That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? That's why we Christians believe in what we commonly call the Godhead or the Trinity. But that's a video for another time. But you're now seeing where you're getting your teachings from. Your teachings are coming from the occult. It's coming from witchcraft. It's coming from men like Johannes Grieber. And I'm wanting you to understand that. These are the sources that the leaders of your group, from its beginnings, quoted from to try to convince you that Jesus wasn't God. And you can see the pretzels that they've been producing to try to twist the word of God to make it fit their beliefs rather than submitting their beliefs to the authority of the Word of God. Just something to, something to think about. So the leaders of your organization, they took bits and pieces from various Bible versions in order to make theirs, because the real Bible does not agree with Jehovah's Witness doctrine. I want to begin this section by reading a portion of a Watchtower publication dated August 15, 1981. This is what it says in there. From time to time, there have arisen from among the ranks of Jehovah's people those who, like the original Satan, have adapted an independent, fault-finding attitude. They say that it is sufficient to read the Bible exclusively, either alone or in small groups at home. But strangely, through such Bible reading, they have reverted back to the apostate doctrines that commentaries by Christendom's clergy were teaching a hundred years ago. So what they're telling you is they believe that if you simply read the Word of God, you cannot be a Jehovah's Witness. Because this and this Watchtower and Awake, any other books, they contradict. If you read just the Bible, you're not going to believe this anymore. If you read this, if you spent most of your time in these, then you're not going to believe this. But you can't have both by their own admission. You cannot have the Watchtower, Awake, and the Bible because if you read and study the Bible, you're going to realize that what they're teaching you is not true. So they have you spending most of your time in these. And if you'll be honest, that's what they have you doing. You're spending most of your time reading these and studying these or variations of these magazines rather than actually sitting down at home on your own, picking up a Bible and just read. So the reason why you have the belief that you have concerning the what they call a torture state, concerning John 1-1, etc., is because they steered you away from this. When they came to your door, they told you they wanted to give you a free home Bible study. 
But you notice, once you got in, there was little of Bible and a lot of magazines. Very little Bible, but lots of magazines. Where did the Bible study go? Bible study means studying Bible, not studying magazines. But what I want to touch on, notice what they said here. By such independent Bible reading, the person reverts back to the teachings of Christianity. What does that tell you about the teaching of the Watchtower? It's not Christianity. When the disciples or the apostles went out, what did they go out with? Did they go out with a magazine? No, they went with the scriptures. That's all they had. That's all they needed. And that's all you need. The scripture is more than able to answer and solve your issues if you have the Word of God, King James Bible. We're going to take a look at John 1.1. We're not going to be talking about Trinity. What I want to talk about is the source. Where are they getting their sources from? You saw in the first part here where their main source for translating John 1.1, 1, 1, the word was a God, was not a Christian source. Their main source was a spirit medium, Johannes Grieber and his Bible version. This was their source. By their own admission, you saw it on the video. Now, when they got caught using Grieber and the spirit medium, they wanted to go out then and try to find other sources to try to convince you that Christians, true Christians, they want to convince you, don't believe in the Trinity. So in the back of their Kingdom into Linear version, on page 1158, in the section John 1.1, 1, 1, A God, this is what they write. Careful translators recognize that the articular construction of a noun points to the identity, a personality, whereas the antheris construction points to a quality about someone. That is what a manual grammar of the Greek New Testament by Dana and Manti remarks on page 140, paragraph 7, accordingly on page 148, paragraph 3. But the same publication says about the subject of the copulative sentence that in a copulative sentence, sometimes the article makes the subject distinct from the predicate. Xenopon's Anaphis 1, 4, 6, and they have Greek uh, words here, but in place was a market, corresponds to what is stated in John 1, 1. In both examples, the above article used to di differentiate the subject, the market mentioned by Xenophon was not the only market. Correspondingly, the same argument could be used respecting the Greek theos without the article John 1.1. 1, 1. Now, what they're saying here, they're claiming to be quoting from Dana and Manti's book, Manual Grammar of the Greek. And I want you to notice, they said in Dana and Manti's book, uh, Manual Grammar of the Greek New Testament, page 140, paragraph 7. Accordingly, on page 148, paragraph 3. Now, I want you to notice, they're pointing to a particular paragraph. They don't want you to read the whole page. They just want you to read the little paragraph. Why? If it can be discovered that the leadership of your organization has been intentionally misrepresenting the works of scholars in order to make it appear that what they're teaching you is true? Would that affect you any? Would it affect you any that they're using theocratic war strategy against you, lying to you to get you to believe what they want you to believe by misrepresenting what scholars have actually written? So what we're going to do, this is the book Manual Grammar of the Greek New Testament. I'm going to put it up on the screen. This is it. Manual Grammar of the Greek New Testament by Dana and Manti. Manual Grammar of the Greek New Testament by Dana and Manti. This is the book they're claiming to be quoting from. Manual Grammar of the Greek by Dana and Manti. You see it on your screen. This is the book they're claiming to be quoting from. So we're going to open up to the pages they claim they're quoting from, and we're going to see what these pages actually say. On page 140, and we're going to put this up on the screen for you, they want you to look just at paragraph 7. 
Instead of just looking at paragraph 7, we're going to read it in its context. You can see it's not big. It's not a big book. So you can read the whole page. It doesn't take that long. Their bottom line is they're trying to convince you that uh, Dana and Mancy, that Dr. Julius R. Mancy, they're trying to get you to believe he doesn't believe in the Trinity. They're trying to get you to believe that he doesn't believe that Jesus is God. And they try to use this book, Manual Grammar of the Greek, to prove that. The problem is, in order to do so, they had to misrepresent Dr. Julius R. Manti and Dana. I'm going to read for you what it says here in the book. Put it up on the screen. Theos occurs without the Article 1, where the deity is contrasted with what is human, or with the universe as distinct from the Creator, or with the nature of acts of evil spirits. Two, when the essential attributes of deity are spoken of. Three, when the operations proceeding from God are appropriated to one of the three divine persons. Does he believe in the Trinity? Sounds to me like he does. Number four, when the deity spoken of, as heathens would speak of, or as a Jew who denied the existence of the Son or the Holy Spirit. But the article seems to be used, one, when the deity is spoken of in the Christian point of view, two, when the first person of the Blessed Trinity is specially designated. The Blessed Trinity. Does he believe in the Trinity? Sounds to me like he does. But the Watchtower is trying to convince you that he doesn't. Let me finish reading this. Number two, when the first person of the Blessed Trinity is specially designated, unless its insertion is unnecessary by the addition of, and he has a Greek word here, or some distinctive epithet. So we go down to where they have number seven. The articular construction emphasizes identity. The unauthorized construction emphasizes character. So that's the only part they want you to read. They want you to ignore the top part where he talks about the three divine persons and the Blessed Trinity. Why? You will find throughout their literature, they do this. I want to warn you, beware whenever you're reading their publications, when they claim to be quoting somebody, and they have dot, 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 dot. They have a sentence or part of a sentence, and then dot, 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 and then the rest of a sentence. Because usually what they're doing is they're taking part of a sentence over here, the rest of the sentence does not agree with what they believe with in, so they leave that out and replace it with dot, 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 dot. And then they find another sentence over here and put the two together. So you got part of a sentence over here, dot, 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 because oh, this other part doesn't agree with the Watchtower, so they leave that part out, and then they throw in a part of the sentence over here. And when you read it together, it sounds like they're quoting the book, when in actuality they're not. That is not proper scholarship. That is deception. Now, you may say, I'm misrepresenting them. So what I'm going to do is real simple. It's one thing for me to say, Dr. Julius R. Mancy does not agree with the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, and that they misrepresented him when they claim to be quoting from his book in their Kingdom and Telenia version. But I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to let you hear seven minutes of a speech that Dr. Julius R. Mancy, who put together this book, Manual Grammar of the Greek, gave. Because when he found out that the Watchtower Society was misrepresenting his writings, he was not happy at all. When he found out that the Watchtower Society was claiming that he agreed with their beliefs that Jesus was not God, he had some few choice words for the Watchtower Society. And most people don't have a copy of this, so I'm going to put it out there for the world to hear. This is what Dr. Julius R. Mancy had to say. Well, how did I get into this and show what we've witnessed business? <laughs> when I found out that they'd quoted from the Danimati Grammar, from a paragraph that I myself have written, on John 1.1, 1, 1, I wrote an article for the Watchman Examiner, published in, in uh, New York City and circulated all through the American Baptist Convention and other places. That article 
became the most read article of anything that I had written, and perhaps have written, even up to this time. I kept hearing from people in different places in the United States wanting a copy of that. And so I sent that out to them. And finally, some people in California, where this fellow used to live, uh, got in touch with me and urged me to make tapes and make uh, trans correct translations of the passages that Jehovah's Witnesses had mistranslated. And they suggested that they would let me know what those passages are. If I would make a careful study of them, what the Greek really says about those passages, and write out what these distortions really are, and what the correct translations of those passages is, uh, they would be grateful to me, and they would furnish uh, uh, an instrument me for me to meet them, and uh, blank tapes for me to use. And so I began, and I made ten tapes that I sent out there to California uh, on, on that, exposing them, and I fulfilled that mission in about two years' time. And then, all along, more and more people were getting in touch with me to write articles or to send them information. You all know how I was asked to write to the headquarters office of Jehovah's Witness. And I did that, asking them not to no longer quote me in favor of any of their doctrines or teachings. If they did, I would sue them, <laughs> and they better be careful. And they have been careful. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry I didn't also ask them to take out of their New Testament the statement that they made when they said that something that I had said was very much like what they believed in. I had said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was Deity. Other people have said the Word was God, and I thought, well, Deity means the same thing, so I'll put it Deity. And they said, well, Deity is very much like a God. They don't have any uh, capital for their God. They just use a small letter for God, a God. And they said, Deity is very much like that. Well, I didn't like that, what they said, <laughs> and so I protested, and uh, you know uh, the results, and many other articles I've written against them, and so on. But here we are, and I'm going to talk to you now about some of these things that they have said in their, their Bibles and so on, and then maybe you can ask some questions if you have your desire for any further information. I read somewhere, I've forgotten whether it was in one of the Bibles of the Jehovah's Witnesses, or it was in the Watchtower Society's statement, that, uh, let's see, oh yes, yeah, that uh, they got a hold of uh, a, a New Testament that was translated and got the right to use it, translated by Rotherham an Englishman who translated the first modern speech New Testament that I know of, Rotherham. And it's, it's a very good one. For that day, it was one very good. And then they said that they used Rotherham's translation and they used the King James Version. They didn't translate the New Testament. They're not the translators of the Kingdom Interlary translation. They are the distorters of translations made by other people. I haven't read any translation that is diabolical and as damnable as the Jehovah's Witness so-called translation. They have deliberately tried to teach people not to put their trust in Jesus Christ. They hate Jesus Christ. They're doing everything they possibly can to keep people away from him. Never to trust in him. Why? Because they're under the dominion 
and leadership of Satan. The scripture says that all that sin belongs to the devil, and they're committing the worst kinds of sin. We say that when a man murders somebody else, it's terrible, and that's one of the worst sins anybody can possibly commit. But they go further than that in murdering. They murder the souls of men and send them to hell for eternity by the distortions that they have given in their translations of the Old Testament and of the New Testament. Mostly in the New Testament, as far as I know. I haven't done much research in the Old Testament because I've been so busy working on the New Testament. So they haven't translated this. They have just distorted the passages that they felt uh, didn't agree with their peculiar doctrines. About the 144,000. That was for Jews. Converts from the Jews, not from many of the Gentiles. That's Bosch. Slop. <laughs> What they're after mostly is to destroy any possible faith in Jesus Christ. So now you've seen probably for the first time. They claimed in your Kingdom and Selenia version that Dr. Julius R. Mancy in his book Manual Grammar of the Greek, they claimed that he agrees with their translation of John 1.1, the word was a God. But clearly you see and have heard now he does not agree with the New World Translation at all. Never has. And he had to threaten to sue them. But what did they do? They knew Dr. Manti was an old man. So they just waited him out until he died. They never recalled the book. That's why 45 years later, I'm still able to get a hold of one of these. And inside this, what does it say? It says Dr. Manti agrees with the Watchtower Society when he does not. That's not the only thing they happen here, where they claim a scholar agrees with them when they don't. But you've heard with your own ears now, Dr. Manti from his own mouth, tell you what he really believes. He does not agree with the New World Translation, so why did they claim he did when they knew he didn't? There's a booklet that used to be out there called Should You Believe in the Trinity, written by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. They've had to pull it. Why? Because they did the same thing in that book. They claimed these scholars agreed with their views when they didn't. And they got caught on it. And rather than be sued, they decided to just pull the book. That's why if you call them up ask them about it, they say it's out of print. You can put anything on the internet, even if it's out of print. But they're not going to put that up there because they'll be sued. Because they know that they took scholars out of context in order to write that book. And why did they do it? They wanted to convince you that Jesus wasn't God. Is that fair? Is that right? Is that Christian to do that? Why can't they just stick with the Word of God? Why do they want you to believe stuff that's not in the Scriptures where they got to find themselves going to spirit mediums like Johannes Grieber to support their views? Understand where I'm coming from. I'm not dealing with an issue with the Trinity right now. I'm asking you, why is it that if their doctrine on Jesus Christ is Christian, why is it when their Bible came out in 1950, and they were asked about it. They could not quote a Christian source to back their views. They went to the spirit medium. They quoted him. They couldn't quote a Christian. They couldn't quote a Christian because their teachings are not Christian. Remember what they said in the Watchtower article earlier. Anybody that stops and reads the Bible for themselves alone at home, just reading the Bible without Watchtower literature, will revert back to the teachings of Christianity. That should tell you what they're teaching you is not Christianity. That's why they don't want you reading the Bible alone. They want you to saturate yourself with these books and these magazines. They do not want you saturating yourself with the living, powerful Word of God. Because for as long as you're reading this book without their magazines, you'll find out what the truth really is. 
which is why they decided to write their own Bible version. And then they keep it secret where it came from, but now you know where it came from. The spirit world. There's no Christian source to back up your New World Translation. If so, they would have said so when it first came out. Not the stuff they're trying to come up with today and they're trying to cover it up. When it first came out, they spelled it out. The spirit medium was the source. That was the source for these teachings they have on Jesus Christ. You want to follow spirit medium? In this, that's on you. But you can't say anymore you didn't know. You know now. Now, I'm not here to beat you up. I'm not here to put you down. I'm here to show you these things so you'll know. Getting back to Johannes Grieber and his ties to the Jehovah's Witness organization. After getting caught using a spirit medium to support their views because they could not find any Christian source to support their views, the leadership of the Jehovah's Witnesses ended up doing something a little strange. So we're going to go back once again to this video by Christiane. Again, her YouTube page, youtube.com slash Christiane. And she did a very good documentary about Grieber in this video. After the Watchtower got caught using a spirit medium to support their views, they did something pretty underhanded. And I want her to show you in her video what they did. Take a look. Okay, we're going to go to April 1st, 1983. And this Watchtower in the back questions from readers. I'm sure some of you are familiar with why in recent years has the Watchtower not made use of the translation by former Catholic priest Johannes Grieber? And then in the answer they go on to tell how Grieber relied on God's spirit world to clarify some diff difficult passages to him and how his wife is a spirit medium. But interestingly here it says the Watchtower has deemed it improper to make use of a translation that has such a close rapport with spiritism. So they promised here that they would not, uh, we are ceasing to use his New Testament. They promised in 1983 they would not use Johannes Grieber's translation again. Let us take a look and see if they stuck to that promise or not. And Jehovah's Witnesses, what would you do if they didn't? Well, let's look. So let me ask you, Jehovah Witness, do you believe the Watchtower? Do you believe they're not going to use them again? We'll hear a question from the readers, they'll not do it again. What would you do if they did? What would you do? Yeah, yeah. Now here's this book. It's in Spanish. It's from 1987 from the Watchtower. It's Aid to Bible Understanding, but the Spanish version of it. Now remember I told you to pay attention to the dates. This is from 1987. Remember? that watchtower it was from 1983 they said they would not use Grieber again but this book is from 1987 now this is four years later and on page 1258 you see here again another favorable quote from Johannes Grieber Now they said they wouldn't use them again but here they are in 1987 using Grieber again you see, to the English-speaking brothers and sisters, they promise they wouldn't use him, but they deceive their Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters. This is not honest. Remember that Watchtower from 1983? Questions from readers? Well, here's the same Watchtower in Spanish, but when you go to the back, there's some differences. There is no question from readers. Now, you might be saying, that is terribly dishonest. They've lied to these poor brothers and sisters, but they have been lying and deceiving all along. They haven't just been lying to the Spanish-speaking brothers, they've been lying to the English-speaking. Remember that question, did they know? There's this book, What Do the Scriptures Say About Survival After Death? This was written in 1955, and on page 88, they are warning Jehovah's Witnesses about Johannes Grieber that he is a spirit medium and about his book, Communication with the Spirit World. But as we saw in the beginning of this video, seven years later, they start quoting Grieber favorably. So as you see, they've known all along, all along that Grieber was a spirit medium. 
Why did you join the group in the first place? You joined because you wanted to be in favor with God. You wanted to do what was necessary to be in favor with God. And you thought that by joining this group, you'd be doing that. Well, this group has misled you. This is just the beginning. This is just video number two. There's more to come. This group has misled you. They misled a lot of people in a lot of ways. Your Bible version is just one of them. And although they've gone through a lot of work to try to remove and change every verse in your Bible that shows you who Jesus really is, they didn't get them all, even in your 2013 version. So I'm going to show you from your own Bible version who Jesus is, and I'm just going to use two books of the Bible and two chapters. That's it, and this video will be done. We're going to be using Psalms 102 and Hebrews chapter 1. And I'm going to show you, first of all, Psalms 102 and what it says. Then we're going to open it to Hebrews chapter 1, and all I ask you is this. We both believe that Jesus never lied. We also both believe that the Father never lies. So let's believe what the Father says about his Son. Let's start off in Psalms 102. It begins by saying, O oh Jehovah, hear my prayer. Let my cry for help reach you. He's praying to who? Jehovah. All throughout this chapter, you find him crying out to Jehovah. Verse 16, for Jehovah will rebuild Zion. You go further down, you have verse 18. This is written for the future generation so that people yet born forth will praise Jah. Verse 19, for he looks down from the holy heights, from the heavens, Jehovah views the earth. It's all about Jehovah. Verse 25, long ago you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. Just like a garment, they will wear out. Just like clothing, you will replace them, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years will never end. Remember the verses 25 to 27 of Psalms 102. Look in your middle column where it says second column next to where it says 103 to the left. Under footnote B, it says HEB 1, 10 through 12. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10 through 12. That's where they're pointing you to. Let's go there and see what it says. Before we do, let's read verse 25 to 27 again. Very important. Long ago you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. Just like a garment, they will all wear out. Just like clothing, you will replace them. They will pass away. But you are the same, and your years will never end. Remember that. Hebrews chapter 1. I believe in reading things in their context. So let's start at verse 6 and read from 6 to 12. But when he again brings his firstborn into the inhabited earth, he says, Let all of God's angels do obeisance to him. Also, he says about the angels, He make up his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But about the sun, he says, God is your throne forever and ever, and a scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You loved righteousness and you hated lawlessness. That is why God, your God, anointed you with the oil of exaltation more than your companions. Verse 10 starts with the word and, mean he's continuing to speak. About who? About his son. Listen to what he says about his son. Verse 10. And at the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. And just like a garment, they will all wear out. You will wrap them just like a cloak, just as a cloak. And as a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never come to an end. Middle column, letter C of the second column says Psalms 102, 25 to 27. In Psalms 102, 25 to 27, that entire chapter is a prayer to who? To Jehovah. In Hebrews chapter 1, 
Jehovah identifies Jehovah as being his son. You can call God a liar if you want. I'm not. But this is what's in your own Bible. Take a look for yourself. Psalms 102, Hebrews chapter 1. Psalms 102, prayer to Jehovah. Hebrews chapter 1, Jehovah the Father uses the very passage that's speaking about Jehovah and says, that's my son. They're talking about my son. Who is Jesus? He must be Jehovah. The Father said so. You want to call him a liar? You really want to call Jehovah a liar? Unto his son, he said. Verse 10. And at the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. And just like a garment, they will wear out, and you will wrap them up like a cloak as a garment, and they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will never come to an end. Psalms chapter 102 Verse 25, long ago you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. Just like a garment, they will all wear out. Just like clothing, you will replace them. They will pass away, but you are the same, and your years will never come to an end. The Father said, these verses are about his Son, and this whole chapter is about Jehovah. Jesus must be Jehovah. He never asked us to understand it. He asked us to believe it. Why? Because the only way we're going to have our sins forgiven is we have to come to Jesus and ask him to forgive us of our sins. Jesus, all through the book of John, says, Believe on him, believe on him, believe on him, believe on him. The Watchtower Bible of Tract Society wants you to believe on them. Think about it. Their focus is on you putting your faith in the governing body. You putting your faith in the faithful and discreet slave. No. You're supposed to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. In the past he spoke to us by the prophets. But these days, in these last days, has spoken to us by his son. In the book of John, what do they call his son? They call the son of God, the word of God. God who in sundry times and times past spoke by the prophets, today he speaks to us through the word of God. And the Watchtower Society Getting back to that article we started off with, Watchtower, August 15, 1981. From time to time there have arisen from among the ranks of Jehovah's people those like the original Satan have adopted an independent, fault-finding attitude. They say that it is sufficient to read the Bible exclusively, either alone or in small groups at home. But strangely, through such Bible reading, they have reverted back to the apostate doctrines that commentaries by Christendom's clergy were teaching a hundred years ago. They're telling you, if you read the Word of God, you won't follow the Watchtower, because the two don't mix. Watchtower teaching and Bible theology are two completely different things. And when you came in the group, they promised you a free home Bible study, but instead they gave you magazine studies. 90% magazine, 10% Bible. That's not Bible study. Bible study is 100% Bible. And they said if you spend 100% time in the Bible, you're not going to follow them anymore because you're going to realize this Bible teaches something different than what they're teaching you. And in closing, if the best they can give is what they've given, that the sources for their views are spirit mediums, Fake Bible versions, the emphatic dialogue, New Testament improved version.
spirit mediums again. Taking scholars out of context to make it appear they agree with them when they don't. If that's the best they can do, which has been the best they can do, why do you trust them? Why not do what they don't want you to do? Get yourself a King James Bible, open it up, and start reading. The King James Bible is tried, true, trustworthy, and tested with a more than 400-year track record of honesty and accuracy. No other translation out there can even come close to what this King James Bible presents. It's translated from completely different manuscripts than the other versions in a completely different style as well. And it's not hard to understand at all. For those who have trouble with the these thousand yeast, let me help you out in less than two minutes to understand the these thousand yeast. In the English language, we have the word you. The problem with the word you is that you can be speaking to one person and say you, and you'd be correct. You could also be speaking to 10,000 people and say you, and you'd still be correct. The word you is both singular and plural. The King James translators didn't want it to be that the readers of the King James Bible would be confused as to if one person is being spoken about or more than one person is being spoken about. So they implemented a simple formula. If one person is being spoken about, a T word would be used. Thee, thou, thy, or thine. If more than one person is being spoken to or spoken about, a Y word would be used. You, your, ye, or yours. So if you see thee, thou, thy, or thine, only one person's being spoken to or spoken about. If you see a Y word, you, ye, your, or yours, that means more than one person's being spoken about. That's how you understand the these, thou, and yees. And by using these words, it does not make the King James Bible archaic. It makes the King James Bible accurate. The Bible is the word of God. The Watchtower is not. The Awake Magazine is not. These other books are not. The Bible is the Word of God. This is the book God will speak to you through. And they say if you read this, you'll revert back to Christianity. Absolutely, that's where you want to be. You want to be reverted back to the Word of God, not to the words of magazines, not to the, a Bible version that they put together and which they admit they use spirit mediums to do it. But they kept that hidden from you, didn't they? It's not hidden anymore. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video, video number two of a 20-part video series called Hidden from Jehovah's Witnesses, being updated right now in the year 2022. For those who've wanted to contribute to this ministry to help me out as I continue to journey on, making videos on the Bible, on cults, writing music, and things of that nature, Feel free to do so. I don't ask people for money, but if somebody wants to do something, I have a music site, jasonzelda.com. That way at least you're getting something for your money and you're not just giving your money away for nothing. You can actually get something back for your money. jasonzelda.com is where I put the songs that I write. I do my own studio work. I do all the putting together of these songs. In many cases, I do the lead vocals, the background vocals, and use my computers and keyboard to add all kinds of other instruments or choirs or all kinds of things to my music. I just like enjoying putting together music and sharing it with people, and I wish more people would take the time to hear my music. So as we end this video, just like I did the first one, I'm going to end it with one of my songs. So I hope you guys will enjoy it. This song will be available at my music site, jasonzelda.com, and the way the site is put together is real simple. Whatever you want to give to the ministry, whether it's a dollar or whether it's a hundred or five hundred or whatever you want to give, I'm not going to tell you what to give. Give what you want. If you're not able to give, don't worry about it. But the way I set up the music site is you can purchase a song for whatever price you want. You want to pay a dollar, you can pay a dollar. You want to pay 500, you can pay 500, whatever you want to pay. You can pay whatever you want on the site for whatever songs that you like. And that way it makes it easy on everybody. And at the same time, for those of you who may want to contribute but can't, don't worry about it. You can still go to the music site and listen to all my songs in their entirety and it won't cost you nothing. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and I look forward to seeing you guys down the road. I'm Jason Zelda, and this is my song called The Joan Rivers Song, found at jasonzelda.com. Hope you enjoy it.
Forgive me for taking so long For long overdue are the words of the song At 4.40 a.m. I'm writing this song for you Right straight to the heart That's where I want this song to go For I wrote this song to tell you, Joe That you're beautiful God, you're so beautiful These are the words your heart longs to hear I pray you'll believe what I'm saying, dear the words that I tell you, they are both faithful and true. Right straight to the heart, that's where I want this song to go. And I wrote this song to tell you, Joan, that you're beautiful. God, you're so beautiful. And I wrote this song to tell you, Joe, that you're beautiful, God, you're so beautiful.